بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو سال خان یوٹیوب چینل اینڈ ود دا نیکسٹ ریلیشن شپ ویل دا سیم ریلیشن شپ بٹ دا نیکسٹ کیس ریلیشن شپ بٹوین یونٹ اسٹیپ اینڈ یونٹ امپلس سگنل اینڈ دس ٹائم ان دی کنٹینیوس ٹائم ڈومین کنٹینیوس ٹائم آئی ہوپ دا سپیلنگ از رائٹ سو اف آئی رائٹ دا فرسٹ If I write down uh, the definition, delta of t, you can write it in infinity, you can write it 1, I wrote in the previous video, let's say I write it as infinity, undefined, at t is equal to 0, and it is 0 at t not equal to 0. And similarly, you have the unit uh, step function, it is 1, for t greater than or equal to 0 and it's 0 for t less than 0. Is that okay? Now a very important property that we know of the unit impulse function that the area under the curve of a unit impulse function is always unity. So if you integrate it to find the area from negative infinity to positive infinity delta of t dt this would always equal one. Fine. Now if I have a question in my mind, if I have a question in my mind that I am integrating this from negative infinity to, uh, to, a positive, to a some constant value, let's say top, to a finite position if I am integrating the same function, so what would be the value? So this could now have two cases. This could now have two cases. One and two. So now if I draw it, if I am drawing the graph, so this is delta of t. It is present at t is equal to zero. This is the time axis, right? And similarly, if I draw another graph. This is the time axis, this is delta of t, this is 0. So the two cases are what? That this tau is definitely not 0, fine. So if this tau is somewhere lying to the left side of 0, this is case number 1, let's say this is the value of tau. So what happens? Now if you integrate it from a value of negative infinity to this value of tau, so you don't have the unit impulse included, so which means the integration would give you an answer of 0. Isn't it so? Similarly now for the next case, if you have tau, the value of tau is at the right side of 0. So which means if you integrate from negative infinity to this value of tau, so you have this value of impulse included, so you will get the answer equal to 1. So have a look, is this not matching with the unit step signal? It is matching. The red color matches with this one, with this case. And the green color matches with this particular case. Have a look. So what do we conclude from here? The conclusion is that if you are integrating if you are integrating the unit impulse function with respect to t the answer is a unit step function is that clear it should be so this is the first relation right this is step in terms of impulse Similarly, we also have, now you know from the basic properties of mathematics that if the integration of impulse is unit step, so the derivative of unit step would be impulse. And how is this? So I'm coming to it. For this, let's say I remove the board. So, now what did we do in the unit step function? We assumed 
that the value is equal to 1 at t is equal to 0 but actually it's not the case so what did we assume was like this that t of t is equal to 0 till the value at t is equal to 0 and then it goes to 1 directly like this so this value of 0 this value is 1 this is t is equal to 0 so we as uh, we assumed it to be like this but actually this is not a case actually we have something else so consider another function so we consider u delta of t so this is the another symbol of delta that i talked about in the previous video u delta of t is what it is zero so let this red color represent the magnitude and blue color represent the value of time this is zero till t is equal to zero fine then it increases then it increases in a linear fashion till t is equal to lambda till t is equal to lambda and after t is equal to lambda the value of it becomes 1 alright this red color represents magnitude and this blue color represents time so till t is equal to 0 it was 0 and after t is equal to 1 after t is equal to lambda it is 1 between 0 and lambda it is increasing in a linear fashion from 0 to 1 is that ok now have a look uh, what is the relation between this u delta of t and u of t so if you apply a limit if you decrease this uh, delta duration so if you are decreasing it you come it over here you bring it over here this increases till here this curve so as you decrease it the slope increases which means that if you apply a limit on this limit that delta approaches to zero u delta of t so what does it become it becomes an ideal step signal u of t which means it directly jumps to one if this delta duration is brought to zero isn't it so it is so this is the relationship now for the slope have a look what is the slope of this line this line the slope of this line is equal to 1 over delta isn't it so how is it so you know this you can find it from y2 minus y1 divided by m2 minus m1 so this point is let's say uh, it's 0 0 and this point in x is uh, delta y is 1 isn't it so so the slope is 1 over lambda now we know that the slope is the first derivative we know that slope is what slope basically tells us about the tangent of theta and tangent of theta is what it is the first derivative Isn't it so? So I could write as uh, as what? That the function, the derivative of what? This is the first derivative of the function u delta of t and this is equal to 1 over lambda. Isn't it so? But when? When? When the time is in between 0 and delta. When the time is between 0 and delta. This is the case otherwise this slope is equal to zero because this is a horizontal line and this is zero otherwise isn't it so it is now if i draw waveform of this slope if i draw waveform of this slope waveform of slope so have a look it's 0 till t equal to 0. Let me put an equal sign over here as well. No, uh, we don't have it. So have a look. It is uh, 0 till t equal to 0. Okay, It would be 0 till t equal to 0. Fine. Then it will go to the value of 1 over lambda. It comes to the value of 1 over lambda and stays 1 over lambda till t equal to lambda and then it comes to 0 again 
So the value over here is 0. This height represents 1 over lambda, comes to 0 again. So this is the waveform. Now this has discontinuity at two points. T is equal to 0, T is equal to lambda. These both are the points of discontinuity. Isn't it so? It is. So now have a look. If I tell you that this width is what? This width is lambda, right? De delta. And this height is 1 over delta. The area is always 1. The area we know, the area, this is equal to a 1. Why 1? Because this is delta multiplied 1 over delta. Isn't it so? It is. Now if I decrease the value of delta, if I decrease the value of delta, so what would increase? The slope would increase, right? The slope would increase, which means that the height would increase. The slope would increase, which means that the height would increase. The area would always be equal to 1. Which means that if I bring delta equal to 0, 1 over delta would go to infinity. And I can also have the opposite case. If I increase delta, the slope would decrease, the height would decrease. If I take delta to infinity, 1 over delta would go to 0. That is just the opposite case for understanding. So now, if I put a limit, this is this function, isn't it so? The derivative, this u of t, this is this is a function, right? Let's say. So this is equal to one over lambda for this particular time. Now, if I put a limit, if I put a limit that this delta approaches to zero, this delta approaches to zero of this function which is the derivative of the unit step function. So now this would equal what? This would simply equal that this magnitude is infinity. This magnitude is undefined at t is equal to 0. And magnitude is undefined at t is equal to 0 for what? For a unit step signal, for unit impulse signal. So which means which means that I could write it over here. The next case that we, was, uh, that we were deriving is this. Now this limit delta approaches to 0. U delta of t is what? This from here. From here. This is the original unit step function. So I could write it as the derivative of the derivative of the unit step function is equal to the unit impulse function and this is what we were after so this is what is the relationship between these two now i also have something else to tell you we have a ram function so uh, well we'll be discussing that also but if I need to tell you over here, so if uh, we saw in the previous video that you have the impulse function, you integrate it to get a unit step function. And similarly, if you integrate the unit step function, you get a ramp function. Is that okay? Similarly, in the opposite manner, wait, if you integrate uh, impulse, you get step, right? Impulse is integrated to get step, and step is integrated to get ramp. Similarly, if you have a ramp function, you you, you take the derivative, you get the step, and similarly, you take the derivative of the step, so you get an impulse function. So if I write it over here, the derivative. Derivative. So that's all about it. The ramp signal we will see it inshallah very soon. We will see it very soon. So 
So that's all about this lecture, okay? So the book has finished about signal and the important signals over here. I have some more signals to discuss with you guys i will see you there okay and uh, another thing that before doing that i will see is uh, about the power and energy signals so i have not seen many examples with you guys so i would also discuss it in the next videos inshallah that's all about impulse and and what step signals that's all about today i'm a little tired so see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and remember not only yourselves everyone around you as well goodbye